Praise the Lord, saints. This is Pastor John Pope, and I want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. You know, our focus here at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church is to build people, build families, and build the kingdom of God. And we know that our God is alive and well. We know that God is still empowering the church to do great things. But as the church, as the people of God, when we come together, we want to lift up the name of Jesus. So that's what we're going to do today. Today is our Jersey Sunday. We're getting ready for football season. But we're not a bigger fan of our sports teams than we are of our God who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So as we get ready to go and praise the Lord, we pray that you would prepare your hearts and minds to receive something great from God Almighty. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church.
the game? Your job ain't done yet. Give me that beat all over again. touch your spirit. Amen. And it's just like sitting down to a good meal. You can't get enough of it. Amen. Well, I want to tell you something. It's okay to praise and worship God in the house. Amen. We want to praise and worship him in the house today because he is wonderful and he is worthy to be praised. There is no God like our God. Amen. There is no God like our God. And I don't know what you came to do, but I want to tell you something. I came to praise the Lord. Amen. I came to lift him up. I came to magnify him. Because if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, oh, where would I be? Brother DeRuin, if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, oh, where, oh, where, oh, where would I be? Amen, 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 amen. Y'all got to be careful about that song right there, because that song invokes the spirit of praise. Amen. That song will light up something down on the inside of you. Amen. 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 If I knew I wouldn't get in trouble with the Lord, I'd probably just change the whole sermon and go from Psalm 150. Say, Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with what God gave me because I don't like a spanking. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to do what the Lord said do. And we're going to go back to the book of Malachi. And we're going to go to chapter 2. Uh, last week we were in Malachi chapter 2 and we looked at verses 10 through 16. And we talked about being in a covenant relationship. Well, this week we're going to go to Malachi chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 17. And we're going to go up to Malachi chapter 3, verse 5. Amen. So we're going to cover six verses there. Malachi chapter 2, verse 17, all the way up to Malachi chapter 3, verse 5. Amen. 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 Now, y'all come on, shake it off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I know somebody's trying to think ahead to what's going to happen after the service. So just want to let you know, just in case you had forgotten, today not only is Jersey Sunday, but it's Catch and Run Sunday. Amen. So right after the service, we got some food that we're going to partake of. Amen. After we have partaken of the spiritual food. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Malachi chapter 2, starting at verse 17. If we could all stand in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. If you're able to stand, we ask that you would stand in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. And when you found that particular passage of scripture, if you would just signify by saying, Amen. 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 If anybody need me to wait, say, hold on a minute, preacher. Amen. Having not heard any waits, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, where Malachi says, You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, 
and he delights in them? Or where is the God of justice? Amen. Chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, and I will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and wit widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Behold, I send a messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come, even the messenger of the covenant. Amen. I'm read in your hearing Malachi chapter 2, verse 17 through 3, verse 5. And if you would allow me, I'd like to speak with you for a few moments. Change is coming. Amen. Change is coming. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of your son Jesus just to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And to thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, dear Heavenly Father. As the song writer said, truly you have been good, dear Heavenly Father. And we want to thank you for all your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. There's none like you in all the heavens nor in the earth. We will bless you, Lord, at all times. Now as your word comes forth, Lord, I pray that you would take center stage and that you would speak a word. And as you speak, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Change. Somebody say change. Change. Is coming. Amen. You know, when I look in the book of Malachi, Malachi is the 12th of the minor prophets. Uh -huh. And he's listed as a minor prophet, as I told you before, not because of the length of his, not because of what he had to say was diminished in any way, but the length of the book is classified as a minor prophet because it is short in length. But in this book, Malachi, the messenger, it contains a word of judgment on the nations of Israel and Judah. See, Malachi is charged by God to help the people understand that God is not pleased with their relationship with him. God is not pleased. And I tell you what, saints, I, don't, I want God to be pleased with my relationship with him. What about you? Amen. Amen. Anybody want God to be pleased? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 See, when God was not pleased. God even told the people of Israel uh -huh. that their words, their words were tiring him out. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. God was chastising the people because it wasn't just their actions, but their words were tiring him out. You see, they claimed that the Lord was treating the wicked better than the righteous. And in their eyes, the wicked were doing so well, and the righteous were suffering. Come on. And since they, the wicked were doing well and the righteous were suffering, they say that God must be overlooking the works of the wicked or he condones what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They make this accusation against God. And I got to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that we see a similar type of condemnation of what God is doing 
in the people, from the people in our society today. See, some people wonder why God doesn't ensure that justice is equal for all people throughout this land. People have a way when things don't go their way. When things don't go their way, they want to accuse God of being unjust. Just because God is not a Burger King God, they want to accuse God of being unjust. Well, sometimes people get in the way of their own blessings. And that's the way it was with the people of Malachi's day. They stood in the way of their own blessing. See, last week I told you about the priests and how the priests were allowing the people to bring defiled animals and, 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 and sacrificing those defiled animals. The priests had allowed the people to violate God's law because they were divorcing the wives of their youth and they were going after pagan women. They, the people of Israel, were treating the things of God as if they were common. They weren't treating the things of God as if they were holy. They were not treating the things of God as if they were not sanctified, but they were treating God as if he was one of them. I see the same thing in people today. We try to come to God any old way, and when somebody tries to give us a word of correction, we get upset and we get mad. But instead of hearing the word of correction, we want to do things our own way. And then we say, God, why aren't you blessing me? Because we're trying to treat God like a Burger King God. God told the people of Israel and Judah, you weary me with your words. And I wonder today if we don't weary God with our actions. I wonder today if we don't short circuit our own blessings because we don't hold the person of God. We don't hold the worship of God. And we don't hold the work of God in the high regard that we should hold it. The Israelites, they needed to understand that Malachi was giving them a warning. Yeah. These weren't the words that Malachi had given. Uh -huh. These were the words that were coming from God Almighty. God was trying to teach the people how to be blessed. But you know what? In preaching a hard word, and it, the answer to God's justice is on the table. But to answer that question, uh -huh. all we need to do is look at Romans 3, chapter 25, I mean, Romans chapter 3, verses 25 through 26. And in those verses, the apostle Paul talked about God's justice. Because God demonstrated his justice by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay the penalty for man's sin. When God sent Jesus to die on the cross and pay the penalty for man's sin, God was showing every person man, woman, boy, and girl, that he had not turned a blind eye to man's wickedness. No, he had not turned a blind eye because when God saw his son, Jesus, hanging on that cross, when God saw his son, Jesus, bleeding from the various orifices in his body, when God saw his son, Jesus, give up the ghost, hang his head and die to pay the penalty for our sin, God says, I am not closing my eyes to the wickedness of the world. Yes, but through the sacrificial death of my son on the cross, I'm revealing my holiness to you. I'm revealing that I am just because now I have answered the call. Yes. I have answered the call that sin or the price that sin demanded. I have answered the call and I have not only proven myself just, but I have proven myself to be the justifier. I am the one who cleansed you from sin. I am the one who opened the door for you to be able to come and have a right relationship with me. I am the one who paid a penalty that you could not pay. Yes. Hallelujah. God says, you're going to make a false claim against me, but I'm going to show you the truth. Yeah. 
Because when my son died uh -huh. on that cross, when my son rose yes. from that grave, yes. when my son sent the Holy Spirit, I am the one that's going to bring about change. Mm -hmm. Because God said change was necessary. When God looked at the people of Israel, mm -hmm. he saw the people in Malachi's day as an unclean people. Even though God had called them out from all of the other nations, God said, you are an unclean people. And my brothers and my sisters, I want us to understand that aside from Jesus Christ, we are an unclean people. We need Jesus. See, when Jesus came, Malachi used the word of a, used an illustration of a metal worker that was standing before a hot furnace. And as the metal is in the hot furnace, all of the dross uh, or, or the impurities that were in that metal rose up to the top of the cauldron or whatever means a vehicle that was holding the medical, metal. And when that dross or the impurities would rise to the top, the metal worker would scrape them out so that the metal that was still left in the pot could be pure and could be used for whatever it needed to be used for. Jesus Christ is the one that draws the dross out of each and every one of us so that God can use us as he wants to use us. When in and of ourselves, we are full of impurities and we need to be clean. And when the Messiah comes, he cleans us up so that we can walk in righteousness before the Lord God Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love what Dr. Charles Spurgeon says. He says that if any of you, my hearers, are seeking the Lord at this time. I want you to understand what it means. You are seeking a fire that will test you and consume much of what has been dear to you. We are not to expect Christ to come and save us in our sins. He will come and save us from our sins. We are not to be walking around in our sins when Jesus Christ has already cleansed us from our sins. We talk about being new creatures in Christ. We talk about doing a new thing in Christ. We don't talk about being like the wine that's in old wine skins. But what the Lord has done, he has introduced a new wine and put it in new wine skins. The Lord has made us over. The Lord has made us new. So when we talk about not going back to yesterday, because the Bible says that we are new creatures in Christ. I'm not worried about the old man, hallelujah. I'm not worried about how I used to be, hallelujah. I'm not worried about the things that I used to do, hallelujah. But I want to do the things that God would have me do now. I pray that you want to do the things that God would have you do now. Our God is a perjurer. He purges out all the old stuff. Yeah. Our God is a purifier. Yeah. He cleans up all the old stuff. Yeah. God has saved us and God has delivered us. He says that a change is going to come. Amen. Yeah. That change is going to come on each and every one of us from the inside out. Yeah. God says a change is going to come. Yeah. If you want to be with the Lord for all eternity, brothers and sisters, we got to go through the change. Yeah. See, a lot of times we talk about women after they hit a certain age going through the change. But I want to tell you something. If you're going to be a true believer, a true child of God, you got to go through the change. You got to go through something that you ain't never been through before. Amen. You got to go through the change. You got to give up some stuff that you haven't, that you used to love, that you used to like. You got to give it up because you got to go through the change. You know why? Because Jesus is coming back one day. And when he comes back one day, he's not looking for the old you to take back with him. Amen. 
He's looking for that new creature in Christ to take back with him. Amen. He's not looking for the cussing and fussing you. Amen. He's not looking for the smoking and drugging you. Amen. He's not looking for the drink and the drunk you. Amen. But he's looking for the one that's following after the spirit of the living God. He's looking for the one who is looking to the hills from whence cometh his help. He's looking for the one who has got the Holy Ghost down on the inside and says, I am a consecrated child of the living God. I'm going to live for Christ and I'm going to die for Christ. He's looking for that one who says that I walk by the, I walk by faith and not by sight. You got to get ready to fight a little something. You got to fight against the old man that tries to keep coming back. You got to fight against all that other stuff because change is coming. And when change comes, embrace the change that God is trying to bring to you. Amen. God knows the activities of men. And he knows that the activities of men will send men straight to hell. But God says, I have heaven. I'm planning a place. I'm building a mansion for you. I'm building a mansion for you, but you got to be prepared. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Amen. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Are you being prepared? Ask yourself, am I being prepared? Am I prepared to go? If Jesus came in the next 30 seconds, would I be ready? Or would I have to drop some stuff and try to get right with the Lord? If Jesus came right now and showed up in this congregation, would I be ready to go back with him? There's some change that has to occur. You see, saints, God is not only going to stand against false accusations. God is not only going to bring about a change. But when God comes, he's bringing judgment and reward with him. Yeah. See, many of the Israelites in the day said, I'm, I'm ready for the day of the Lord. I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the day of the Lord. But what they didn't understand is that when the day of the Lord comes, that it was going to be a terrible day. It was going to be a day when the Lord pronounced judgment on evildoers. Look at the words in Malachi 3 and 5 and you will see that the Lord is going to pronounce judgment because the Bible says, the Lord Almighty says, I will appear among you a judge. Amen. When Jesus comes back, he's not coming back as a baby in a manger anymore. Amen. He's not coming back as your savior anymore. Amen. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back and I will appear among you to judge. And I will testify at once against those who practice magic, against adulterers, against those who give false testimony, against those who cheat employees out of their wages, against those who take advantage of widows, orphans, and foreigners, against all who do not respect me. Do you respect the Lord? Do you honor God? Do you lift up the name of the Lord, not only in your heart, but in your actions? Are you walking with the Lord today? That's what we need to ask ourselves. Yes, sir. Are we ready to stand before the judge? Are we ready to stand before the Messiah, the anointed one of God? Are we ready right now? Are we ready? And when we stand before the judge, are we assured that God will declare us not guilty and that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life? Hallelujah. The Lord says change is coming, not change might come. God says he is going to be the judge, not that he might be the judge. God is going to testify against the evildoers, not that he might testify. Hallelujah. Lord, put my name in the number. I pray that your name is also in the number. Amen, amen, and amen. See, God's going to clean up some things. He's coming, and he already came one time to clean up some things. And as long as the people walked in their sin, they could not get a blessing from the living God. As long as they did what they wanted to do, they could not, and God would not give them his blessing. 
as long as they decided to look away from God and look at all the other things in this world, they could not and God would not give them a blessing. Hallelujah. As long as they wanted to celebrate all of those things, that witchcraft and adultery, lying and cheating and disrespecting the less fortunate and disrespecting God, God would not and they could not get a blessing from God. But I want to tell you something, saints. When Jesus showed up the first time, the Lord ripped the veil of injustice a way to reveal the true nature of the Israelites people. And thank God that he ripped the veil away because when he ripped the veil away, he helped expose the evil people, the evil practices that the people were doing. And when he exposed the evil practices that the people were doing, he gave them a way to have an opportunity to repent of their evil and to get right with God. Well, now that the veil has been ripped away, God is also exposing our evil practices. God is also showing us what we need to do in order to get right with God. Amen. And I want to tell you something. The person on your left, the person on your right may be, may be able to tell you how to get right with God, but you can never get right with God until you actually come to God and repent of your sins before God and ask God to help save, to save your soul. Amen. We have to stand before God. And we say, thank you, God, for bringing the change. Thank you, God, for letting me be right here in this service right now at this time that I might hear this word because now, God, I have a decision to make. I have a decision to make that's going to impact my life, God. I have a decision to make to make sure that I'll be able to be with you in eternity, God. Because Jesus is coming back a second time. You see, he is coming back a second time. The people in the first century, they were wondering when Jesus was coming. I want to tell you, the Lord has already come, but he is coming back a second time. Just like he was prophesied in the Old Testament that Jesus was going to show up, that the Messiah would be here, that the Christ was going to show up. He showed up in front of a bunch of shepherds, and when he showed up, the angels began to proclaim the good news that the Savior was born, the Savior of all mankind was born. He showed up just like they said. And the Bible lets us know that he's coming again. Are you going to be ready for the second coming? See, because God has already given us his promises. And his promises are trustworthy. Sin is going to have a short-lived run among men. It may have been raining for thousands and thousands of years, but I say that it's a short-lived run because when we get to be with the Lord, we will be with him for eternity. And a thousand years is nothing more than a day before the Lord. Hallelujah. Sin only has a short-lived run. God has already given us and demonstrated his love for us by being patient. Amen. He's been patient with you and he's been patient with me amen god could have come back long time ago when we were in the midst of our sin and then our souls would have been lost but god says i'm gonna wait another day for somebody else to come on in to the kingdom of the living god my son died that all men might have the right to the tree of life and I know that there's going to be some that are going to come in and there are others who are going to try to hold out just a little while longer but I want to tell you saints our God has been so good and I want to say thank you, God. Dear Heavenly Father, for waiting on me. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you, God, for waiting on those, dear Heavenly Father, who are still standing on the sidelines. Heavenly Father, I pray that your spirit will begin to move and that you will begin to prick hearts. Hallelujah. And Lord, as you are patient, dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would execute your plan. Come on, Lord, and execute your plan that some soul 
soul might be saved today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I know you're not going to wait forever. Dear Heavenly Father, but while you're waiting right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would begin to move. And as you begin to move, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would begin to touch somebody. And Lord, as you begin to touch somebody, let it be like a fire that shut up in their bones. Hallelujah. Let the conviction be like a fire that shut up in their bones. And God, as you begin to move, move, Lord God, as you make their toes tingle, hallelujah, and they begin to wonder why their legs are starting to heat up, oh God. And then they wonder why their, heats, their hips are heating up, oh God. Oh Lord, continue to move down on the inside of them as it moves on up to their chest, dear Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And Lord God, they begin to look around to see if it's beginning to happen to somebody else. Lord God, I pray that the fire would get so hot, Lord God, that they begin to break out in a sweat, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord God, in their mind, they're wondering, what's going on? What's going on down on the inside of me? And, oh, God, I pray that you would draw, draw, oh, Lord, draw, oh, Lord, as you are bringing about the change. Draw, oh, Lord, that soul out of the world. Draw, oh, Lord, that soul next to Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, God, you have salvation, and you set salvation aside for all men and women. God, I pray that today will be the day that your child, would accept that the change is already here. And today is the day that they won't harden their hearts, oh Lord, but they will receive what thus saith the Lord. Oh God, oh God, as you open up the floodgates of change, oh God, oh God, I pray that you would bless them in a way that only you can. Come, dear Lord, come in this place. Come, Holy Spirit and have your way come holy spirit and move from heart to heart and breast to breast oh lord you're still in the soul saving business come on god bring your plan to fruition come on god remove that uh, remove that apathy towards you oh god remove dear heavenly father all of the obstacles that are getting in the way of your people receiving your blessing come holy ghost come holy ghost and begin to fill this place come holy ghost like a mighty rushing wind come on holy ghost and set some soul on fire god we need you on today oh lord i pray lord that you would rain down right here at galilee missionary baptist church oh god i pray that you would touch somebody right now lord god somebody sitting on the sidelines and they're trying to resist they're trying to hold on to the old man but oh god release them from the shackles oh god Break the chains that they're under. Come on, Holy Ghost, and have your way. Come on, Holy Ghost, burn down on the inside. Come on, Holy Ghost, and do a new thing. Open up some eyes, dear Heavenly Father. Let the scales fall off their eyes. Let the scales fall off their heart. Come on, Lord, we need you right now. Come on, Lord, we need you right now. Be a consuming fire. Be a consuming fire in this place. We know that you're coming back again. We know that you're coming back again. We're trying to get ready. We're trying to get ready. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Help somebody to take that step. Help somebody to take that step and to renounce their old ways. For you, Lord, are bringing about a change. And whether we believe it or not, a change is coming. The question is, 
will you be ready for the change? Because God is going to have his way. Amen? Amen. And amen. We praise God for each and every one of you. As we prepare to close with our closing prayer and benediction, we want to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today. And we pray that something was said or done that has blessed you and will keep you for this week. Please, we ask you to let somebody else know to come and join you in the house of the Lord as we worship together. Father, we come now in the name of your son, Jesus, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you that change is coming to Heavenly Father. And we're praying, dear Lord God, that we will be a prepared people to meet a Lord who is prepared to take us back home. Lord God, I pray that as we walk through this week, that we would draw closer to you through the study of your word, through a time of prayer, devotion, and personal worship. Heavenly Father, may we never, ever forget anything that you have done for us because you've been so good to us. God, we thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. Now, Lord, we pray that the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the precious and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We thank God for everything that he's doing and everything that he has done. You know, our God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us so that we might have the opportunity for eternal life. But not only did he send his son Jesus that we would have the opportunity for eternal life, but God calls us to share the gospel, the good news with all who are in this world. God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God doesn't want any man, any woman or child to go to that place called hell, and hell is a real place. Our God desires for us to be with him in heaven. But the question that we all must ask is, do you know Jesus? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Today, if you have not accepted Jesus in your heart, if you would just Ask the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Profess your faith and believe in him as the son of the living God. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. You can be saved. You can secure your eternal destiny. And that's what God wants for us. We pray that you want it for yourself. My brothers and my sisters at Galilee, we love God. We worship God. And we love when the family can get together to worship together. So if you're ever in San Angelo, Texas, we invite you to, to drop by 721 West 19th Street. You can join us for our Bible studies on Wednesdays at 6.15 p.m., our Sunday morning worship uh, at 10 a.m., or come out for our Sunday school at 9 a.m. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. We thank you for joining us for the worship hour today, and we pray that you would be with us again next week. In the meantime, you can always catch us on Facebook, you can catch us on YouTube, and you can also catch us on the Gospel America Network. May God bless you, and God keep you, is our prayer. Have a blessed day. In the ministries uh, about 36 years and I've been in three different churches since the Lord saved me at uh, Primera and then I went to Segunda and then I was at Great Creek for 16 and a half years Baptist Church and uh, God used me there and uh, December the 15th of 21 I had a triple bypass open heart surgery and they just took me down and but God is good he, yes, he, he is. seven days later I was at home yeah. hallelujah so we thank the Lord for what he's doing. I'm retired from that church now, so i just kind of been doing some evangelistic ministry. Wherever the Lord calls me, churches that call me by me, I'm, I'm there ready to sing. Praise God. Vamos a cantar un canto. This song is in Spanish, but you're going to see it in English somewhere. And, uh, but you can follow along, but I'm going to listen to the words in Spanish. It's just a sweet spirit, sweet presence of God as we sing in Spanish. I'll sing the last verse so y'all can join in with me, but it goes, En el monte de Jehová, yo se vio una 
cruz en la de ofrenda y dolor. Y yo quiero esa cruz, no murió mi Jesús por salvar a más mi pecador. Hoy yo siempre amaré esa cruz, en su triunfo mi gloria será. Y algún día antes de una cruz, mi corona Jesús me da. Aunque el mundo desprecie si la cruz de Jesús, para mí tiene su atracción. Porque en ella llegó el poder de Dios, mi pecado y mi condenación. Hoy yo siempre amaré esta cruz, en su triunfo mi gloria será. Y yo algún día vendes de una cruz, mi corona Jesús me da. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true, in shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. Come on, sing with me. So I share Christian. Jesus 
Jesus, I've come to the glory. Jesus, I come.